Alrighty, let's play this in full first. Doing. Okay, I think I got two places that are a bit fast. And I think the hang time could be just a bit longer as well. So if I go back here, it's basically a couple of things here. Watch out how strongly those legs bend over one frame. It's a bit of a pop. So you can reduce that. You can also see spacing wise how the head is small, 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 and then suddenly gets into a bigger, bigger pop right through there. But it's mostly in here how the root goes down. So ease into that a bit more. And then for a jump, I will probably start lifting the head a bit earlier so that imagine the nose is here right now so that the nose will be a bit higher so that it's a bit of a lead with the head. So it's not so I'm looking at the ground. And then you can have a nice you know, lead with the head into that curvature there. And then there are a couple things. On that push off, I will wait until the very end where you are fully stretched almost fully stretched into a foot roll so that you're a bit more like this stretched out foot roll and then you can be actually further along that spacing is a bit small from here to here and then suddenly it's really big there um, it's a couple of things I've got to unwrap this a little bit so basically there's so much pressure that you're going to put down on the feet with the leg on that push off here that the foot is going to stay 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 and not start lifting because you don't you're not even on a foot roll so now you're really just it's almost like a horse where you're on the on the hoof there, where you're really pushing off through this. That's not quite as powerful in how you would jump. So I would keep this flat, 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 flat. Even here, be flatter. I mean, we'll have a bit more of an extended leg. And then you can start going into a foot roll, foot roll into, again, the spacing would now be higher, into a full extension. And then you can go up into this. Now... For the spacing of the roots, I'm going to go into some onion skin here. Uh, let me see. I can probably just use this section just because it's so clearly visible somewhat to me as I'm going here frame by frame. I know that's not very exciting to watch, but that's something that everybody needs to do. And then hopefully with any type of software that has ghosting in there. I mean, you can also do it within Maya. I mean, you can also just use a motion trail, like anything that will give you an insight into the spacing. And this might not be super, super precise, but it gives me a good idea. It's well, actually, I'm going to continue because you're here, down here, and there's really almost no movement there for a couple of frames. And then we're lifting up. So I'm skipping a couple of frames because they're so locked. And then you're going up, and I think that should be okay. I mean, you're a bit strong on the stop. Anyway, now as you go back, you can see what is going on here. So I'm going to switch colors just quickly. So as you start, you can see how the spacing, you started with an arc. That's pretty good. You're going up, and it starts to get a bit wider in the spacing. Not hugely, though. Imagine that it's a bit slow and then you start really speeding up through this section for a push off. But right now it's a bit even. You can see here the spacing is fairly even until here. Here, from here to here, you're just you're barely moving up. So that's a bit of a weird slow down. And then from here to here, you can really see that massive pop. So you can see the dots or the lines, how it's all small and then bam, really shoots forward. And the same to here, and then it's kind of smallish again. But what you also see is the arc. You can see, hold on, I'm gonna get super fancy here. <laughs> As you go up here, it's almost like that trajectory of what the root is doing is telling me, I'm gonna shift actually a different tool here. So if I look at this, especially throughout the end here, it's like, all right, I'm gonna shoot this way up. But then you can see that, whoa, what are we doing here? We're suddenly going away from that arc you'd almost expect something like that as an arc you know rough rough arc there maybe not that high but you can see what's happening here is that instead of going up and falling we're doing that you can see that here and then we have that that's not too bad if that was just the arc here you know, if that would if you go backwards from that you would fall down to here 
but that is okay and then once you, once you go here you can see now from here to here that we're going very straight so instead of following through with the arc we're doing this which feels a bit odd and once you're here you're suddenly shooting up you can see this here when you track just all those dots here this is what's happening into that and then straight up so that just feels you can see here that change in all those arcs you're going up suddenly to the right and then into a nice arc and then suddenly very straight and then suddenly over to the right and then suddenly straight down and then stop and then straight up so what i would recommend either what i usually do in this case I take a dry erase marker. I have two of them. So one color is what we had before, which I just erased. But it's basically you're you're showing kind of like this is what you're doing. Like obviously I'm exaggerating, but that's that's roughly what you're doing. Not overlay, but kind of what your arc is doing. And that's what I would track with one dry erase marker. Again, anybody can use whatever tool they want to use. I use that directly on my monitor. And whatever it is, right? This is not spacing wise, but you know. This is basically what it would be with dots, so I can see what's going on. Then I have a second er uh, dry erase marker, and I go, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm here, I'm down here, and I want to jump, and I go into that, and I draw the arc that it should be. And then you can see now how your root is not following that arc at all. And that's now your guide. And you can use this with the motion trail, where you start readjusting your curve, and you can... You know, you can also take a sphere. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can take a, draw a nerves curve as a guide. You can create a sphere, scale it up and have that as is, you know, whatever, somewhat sphere. I mean, you can do it like this, where that is your helper sphere in terms of geometry. And now you can have your guy jump and follow that arc. You know, like whatever is useful for the timing and spacing. Well, spacing first here, but... I think the timing is not too bad. It's like because of those arc changes that you have, it gives us that that up, slow down, pop, and then a bit of a, uh, an even drop through there because it's so straight. And this coming up a bit and that ending is just a bit harsh. And you can see this mostly in here. Again, I will probably keep that head a bit higher so that we're not looking at the ground. And then as you go back up, it wouldn't be, again, spacing wise, you can track just the back of the head. You go back, back, back. And then you can see on the next frame from me, you know, 52, 53, you can see nothing's happening. So we're going, shh, boom. so this hits this invisible wall, bang, and then that's that. Versus I'm going back, maybe overshooting a bit and then coming back. So I have a bit of a, a little move like that. So that is what I'm seeing here. You have some questions here, some weird feet sliding issue at frame 39. So 39. Oh, okay, so basically, your pivot is here, and now you rotate the foot down. Well, it's not even that. But then the pivot would just be down flat here. Well, sometimes when you have a foot like this, and then you just rotate down, the pivot is not really from here. It's from where the controller is. So if this is an actual contact here, and you just rotate down, your foot is not going to be here. It's actually going to slide back. But this is more than you would think kind of huh? yeah it goes back a bit to the left as well so basically again you need to just track that moment where this is the contact go down and now translate the foot forward so that that heel is actually here and this could be visually you can put in a cube as a helper guide but that is just a, tra the, a continuation of some keys going back and you can see how it kind of moves forward a bit here so that feels like there's a key here and there's a key here. And in the graph editor, when you have something where it stops, but you have a key and key and it's you spline everything, it's going to have that little spline bump in there. So that makes sense, right? So if you have keys like this, key, 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 key. If you would spline this, then you would have that and do something like that. So you don't have to put that on a linear key for the translate and then it just locked so no more splining on the translates yeah it moves all the way to here so really check that in there and then use the fkik switch to pose the legs better in air any technical advice on that will be helpful hmm interesting i don't know if i would actually switch to fk 
because what's also happening here was you're not in the air for that long so it's me this would just be posing it out using ik throughout but if you track also this if i just track the ankle you're gonna see here as it goes up whoa there you go we suddenly have this this and then the sudden drop and then a backwards move but you can see it through here that that is not an arc you have clearly a triangle through there so again you have to track this using whatever means motion trail dry erase marker um like whatever you prefer but this just comes down to you you're taking knees ankles the root shapes you know if you had arms there you would track elbows and shoulders and and that's just you got to go in there frame by frame and sometimes it helps to draw out the arc first where you're like well i want to follow this arc now and then you take your root and you track it along that arc now this would be very even spacing so then you start easing in for hang time and then easing out into acceleration into a drop and so on and so on Alrighty, i i hope that's clear um you did give me the Maya files, but I, th I think that's fairly into detail. But you tell me. Um, let me know tonight, tomorrow, and I can always go into the Maya file and show you how to track things if you want. That's totally up to you, whatever you prefer. Um, but that's it for me. Thanks. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.